Episode 331 The Explosion That Shocked the Entire Nation That night, Rachel was in a bad mood after returning to the Nixon residence alone. Looking around the room, she felt that she had really been too unreasonable. How could she really think that she was the Nixon family's young madam just because of her time at the Nixon residence? In reality, Rachel had long known that a day like this would come. In her heart, she had imagined many times that she and Aaron would separate one day and never interact with each other for the rest of their lives. In her other ordinary world, she would watch Aaron get married, have kids, and live out his splendid life in the limelight. She sighed. Sitting on the bed, she thought that she should get someone to do evaluation on her remaining assets and determine how she should live in the future and what property she should purchase or rent. Just then, Blair called to inform her that the cast and crew were planning to leave for another part of the country to film some scenes. She asked if Rachel wanted to leave together with the rest of the team or book a flight for tomorrow. As Rachel looked around the house, she felt that she had to pull herself together and work hard. In the future, she still had to live her life properly. Even if Aaron was no longer around, she still had to live on. Fortunately, she still had her own things to do right now because she had not abandoned her own life all this while. Thus, Rachel told Blair directly that she would just follow everyone along today. It would also be a little more convenient for her to arrange to accommodate and perform other tasks together with them upon arrival. Thus, Rachel casually packed her luggage and headed directly to the airport. At the airport, everyone was scrolling through their phones lazily. When Courtney saw Rachel, she even said, You're really professional. Rachel smiled and asked, Isn't Courtney here too? I'm here because I coincidentally had a night shoot, and I didn't want to sleep after filming either, so that's why I came directly to the airport. Rachel said, It's no fun for me at home either, so why not come along with everyone? A row of people was waiting for the last flight. Outside, there were fans who had already discovered the celebrities here and wanted to come over. They were quickly blocked by airport security. To prevent the crowd from increasing in size and negatively affecting operations, the airport specially opened a private room and invited everyone to the private VIP room to await boarding. Everyone was very happy upon hearing this and prepared to head there together. However, it was not Rachel's first time going there. Each time Aaron traveled, there was always a private room like this. But when she thought about it, it was definitely a very extravagant luxury to an ordinary person. In the future, luxuries like these would probably become more and more removed from her. They had not even taken a few steps before they saw the news suddenly being broadcasted on the airport's large screen. We interrupt the broadcast with a piece of breaking news. An explosion has just occurred at a villa. According to reports, the affected property belongs to Nixon Industries. More than 20 people at the site are either dead or wounded, most of them being the Nixon family's private bodyguards. Word on the site is that Aaron had a meeting with an ambassador dispatched by the nation's prime minister. It appears that a spy intruded into the meeting and created this explosion. The ambassador died on the spot, and it is not clear whether Aaron is dead or alive. The president, Mr. Edward Nixon, has already issued an urgent order requiring all airports to reinforce security checks and immediately intercept any suspicious individuals. Just then, security personnel suddenly entered the airport and began inspecting everywhere. None of the cast and crew had expected this to happen. They watched as the people around them suddenly sank into chaos. Their surroundings were also in a complete uproar. The fire was ablaze everywhere on the screen. The villa had already exploded until only fragments seemed to remain. The fire and the police lights melded together, and the sounds coming from the screen were extremely chaotic. It was impossible to tell what exactly the situation on the site was like. Rachel was staring at the screen just like that. Her eyes were fixed on each image shown on the screen, as if she had already looked into each inch and pixel. She just wanted to see a familiar figure or read a tiny bit of other news about Aaron. However, she did not. 
People were intensely discussing beside her. Someone was asking what exactly was going on and whether anything had happened to Aaron. Good Lord! Aaron is so handsome! The explosion won't hurt him, right? I reckon he'll definitely get injured. Didn't the ambassador die on the spot? Since they were having a secret meeting, they should have been located close to each other. It's really too terrifying. This was probably aimed precisely at Aaron. That's a matter of course. The economic lifelines of so many people are in the clutches of these major figures and their each and every action. If the Nixon family so much as shakes, the entire nation will quake. It's definitely no joke. If there is just the tiniest bit of an issue with Aaron, then there'll be a huge problem. Just then, Blair caught sight of Rachel. She squeezed through the crowd to get her and held her arm from behind. Rachel, how are you? She looked up at Rachel. Rachel just stared unblinkingly at the news on television. Beside her, Courtney saw her expression and gazed at Rachel strangely. What's wrong, Rachel? Quick, let's go. In a while, this place is going to be locked down for inspection. There'll probably be a lot of people. If they see us, the situation will become even more chaotic. However, Rachel seemed not to have heard her and continued to look. Pursing her lips, Blair raised her head and looked at the television. The president was giving a speech in the Glass Palace, and he first expressed that the matter would be thoroughly investigated. The nation has just formed a special team with our country to investigate the entire incident together. We express our deep condolences for the death of our nation's special ambassador. This is a joint loss for the entire country and a violent incident that incites anger as well. We will not let the perpetrator off just like this. As she looked at the Edward Nixon who appeared on the television, Blair even paused for a moment. They very rarely watched political news, so now that she was gazing at him, she felt as if she was looking at another person. That person was absolutely not the person she had met before. She froze before seeing a row of people already walking towards them swiftly from behind. They were carrying loaded guns and looked big and tall. The person leading them was in western clothing and leather shoes and had his eyes on Rachel. Sensing the situation, Blair quickly pulled Rachel to her. Rachel, look! Rachel turned her head only to see them already in front of her. They looked at Rachel and merely bowed silently in greeting. Meanwhile, outsiders were not aware of what had happened here and merely saw a row of armed people entering in rows from outside. While protecting a woman in the middle, they walked out neatly and their formation was so large that people were slightly confused. However, this scene was not particularly out of the ordinary, given that the airport was now filled with security personnel everywhere. The jittery crowd continued standing there while watching the news. They were afraid that the incident would affect their flight, and worried that it would also impact the country's economic policy. Many more people were even speculating about how exactly this incident had occurred. Naturally, Rachel could not follow the cast and crew elsewhere for the shoot. She was solemnly led out of the airport by those people. When they arrived outside, a large car was parked there. It was clear that the car was completely equipped with explosion-proof protection. The people around it also momentarily made her feel that the atmosphere was oppressive and indescribably heavy. Episode 332 are Aaron's whereabouts unknown? The people who had come along had very solemn expressions as well. Rachel could only ask, Excuse me, where are you taking me? How is Aaron doing now? Is he in the hospital? Madam, none of us know Mr. Nixon's condition. We just received instructions to protect his wife and escort her safely to her destination. As for Mr. Nixon's condition, you'll probably have to ask the people involved after you arrive there to find out. Rachel became even more anxious when she heard this. She instinctively clasped her hands tightly together in front of her. With her hands clasped, she only worried if she would encounter any unpleasant situation later or receive some terrible news. However, she could not allow herself to add to Aaron's troubles again. She had to be fine. She definitely had to be fine. Nothing would happen to Aaron. 
he would definitely be fine too. Aaron was so powerful and so impressive. How could anything happen to him? The place that she arrived at was not the hospital nor the Nixon residence either. The place looked more like a sanatorium. After getting out of the car, Rachel walked in hurriedly. She immediately saw that a tight blockade had been imposed inside. When Rachel entered, the person who stopped her at the door looked at her, matched her face to her photo, and also inspected her eyes before saying, Madam, please go in. Rachel breathed in deeply and walked in large strides. She saw doctors walking around inside, and it looked like not one person was not in a hurry. Rachel instantly caught sight of Frederick standing at the entrance and quickened her steps. Frederick! Rachel called out as she walked in. Frederick turned his head. There were others who turned their heads at the same time. However, when they saw Rachel, they asked fiercely, Who is this? Why did you casually bring someone here? Frederick said hastily, This is his wife, Mrs. Rachel Nixon. How dare you block just anyone? Where are your eyes? They froze when they heard this. They did not expect Aaron to have already married in secret without anyone knowing. They bowed their heads respectfully to Rachel. Frederick said, Madame, don't be afraid. These people are from the military and don't know you. I'm fine. Aaron. Madam, don't be anxious. Mr. Nixon barely escaped death and is still in critical condition right now. But nevertheless, he is fundamentally all right. He was still in critical condition? Rachel's heart softened immediately. Then how exactly is he now? Where is he injured? Frederick looked at Rachel with a troubled expression. It's good that you're here now. When Mr. Nixon woke up just now, the first thing he thought of was you, and he instructed us to quickly move you to a safe place. He fainted again and is now unconscious. This place is a sanatorium owned by Nixon Industries and is equipped with everything. The situation outside will be turbulent for the time being, so it's better for you to stay here instead. As for Sir, it's better for you not to visit him since it's a little scary. No, I want to take a look. It doesn't matter. Nothing scares me at all. Just let me see him. But no buts. He is ultimately still my husband. I want to see my husband, can't I? Rachel lifted her head up assertively and gazed at Frederick. Frederick paused and looked inside awkwardly. However, Rachel had already started walking in. I want to see how he's doing. Seeing that he could not stop her, Frederick hastily followed her. The doors opened and Rachel saw that the person inside seemed to have tubes inserted all over his body. The area beside him was filled with red bandages and there was even an oxygen mask over his mouth which covered half of his handsome face. His deathly pale face made her heartache. Rachel walked in hastily and looked at Aaron. On the bright side, his breathing was regular, and he already looked much better. Frederick said, Although he looks frightening, it's actually all right. His vitals are still very stable. Madam, you don't need to worry too much. I'm fine. Is he in a coma? Yes, the doctor said that he will probably regain consciousness tomorrow. He's only like this because he was administered anesthesia. Okay. That night, Rachel sat at the side as she looked at Aaron. She had not at all expected such a thing to happen out of the blue. The people outside continued bustling around in unrest for the entire night. Rachel sat there watching Aaron. Her eyes kept tracing the contours of his perfect face for the entire night. She did not sleep at all. From time to time, someone came in to check on his condition. There were also people walking around and inquiring about the incident. However, she could not clearly hear them from inside the room. Rachel kept holding Aaron's hand and did not know how much time had passed before she heard a sudden groan from Aaron. Rachel... Rachel instantly sobered up. She sat up from where she was beside him and quickly looked at the man on the bed in joy. You're awake! Aaron frowned and looked at Rachel. He looked down and caught a glimpse of her hands presently placed in his. He still had not forgotten how she had angered him to death before this, causing him to leave the Nixon residence directly thereafter. He asked, Why did you come here? 
Rachel had been so glad earlier because he had finally woken up. But she suddenly heard such a cold line from him. She angrily pushed his hands away, stood up directly and said, Since you clearly didn't want to see me, then I'll just leave. Hey. Aaron was already about to die of anger because of her. Rachel, you dare to leave? When Aaron sat up, the apparatus on his body started beeping immediately. Rachel quickly turned her head to see him getting up hastily and pulling at the apparatus and the wounds on his body as well. He frowned as his badly mutilated shoulder froze in its place. Shocked, Rachel ran back to him in a hurry. Don't move! Why are you moving around? Rachel quickly held Aaron down. Aaron was in so much pain that his complexion turned slightly paler. However, he swallowed his pain down forcibly and refused to let out any sound. He merely raised his head and looked at the woman before him with his teeth clenched together. He was absolutely sure that he would sooner or later die in this woman's hands one day. He said, Fine, go. If you walk out this door, then don't come back again for the rest of your life. I'm only doing this because I'm afraid you'll get irritated when you see me, Rachel yelled. You mean because you'll get irritated when you see me, Aaron said. Rachel said bitterly, I... When did I ever get irritated from seeing you? As he looked at Rachel, Aaron no longer wanted to waste another word on her. He simply pulled her down forcefully, took her directly into his arms, and landed a hard kiss on her small and infuriating mouth. He gnawed at her lips as if venting all the resentment he felt towards her inside. This time, however, Rachel stopped evading him at last. She tasted the hint of bitterness from the medicine in his mouth, but he was still as captivating and smelled as good as ever. Even at his lowest moments, this man always retained his top-notch elegance and charm. How could she resist him? Panting faintly, Rachel's arms had instinctively wound around his neck long ago. This continued until they stopped. She breathed in deeply and felt as if she was already in a complete daze. However, when she registered what was happening, she realized that she had at some time already seated herself on him. Her body was now resting on his shoulder, which had been bandaged the night before. She let out a shout and frantically said, Your injury! Episode 333 The watch was merely chosen by Blair. I didn't know about it. Aaron looked down and released Rachel. His anger towards her had yet to completely dissipate. He said, All right, now you can get lost. What? He was telling her to get lost now that he was done kissing her? Rachel glared at Aaron. Aaron, stop messing around. You're seriously injured right now. I came here so that I can stay here and look after you. Aaron said coldly, No need. I have plenty of maids here looking after me. Since you hate me so much, I don't want to continue holding up your time either. Rachel wondered who exactly hated who. Aaron... Let me get this straight. You were clearly the one who treated me so roughly first. Why did that result in you hating me? Aaron sneered and looked at Rachel. I treated you roughly. You were the one who rejected me first. Of course, you probably wouldn't have been so opposed to it if it had been Arnold. Sorry, from the start, the person you wanted to drug and marry was Arnold. It was I who shouldn't have stayed in that room. Hey, Aaron, why did you mention Arnold again out of nowhere? He's just a senior in the industry. Our relationship is totally not what you think it is. Rachel was about to spring to her feet. Aaron asked, what kind of relationship am I thinking about? Yes, it's just a relationship where you give one another a love token. Why? You gave him a wristwatch. What did he give you in return? A necklace? A ring? But I'll give you a piece of advice. Nothing will come of the two of you anyway. His last relationship ended because of my mother's interference. Do you think that my mother will be able to tolerate a person who was once my wife having a relationship with Arnold instead? Rachel froze. When did he find out about the watch? 
She looked at Aaron in disbelief. What nonsense are you spouting? Arnold asked me for the watch. He said that I should thank him for his care towards me. I also thought that I should gift him a little something, since he's usually very caring towards me, and is always helping me improve my acting skills. So I just asked Blair to casually buy something for him. The creases between Zara's eyebrows seemed to smooth out a little, but he still looked as if he had not completely relaxed. Blair bought the watch. It was just a casual gift of thanks. Rachel said, "How could you think that there's something between us just because of a present?" I, there's no way that I would do that. I told Arnold from the start that I'm already married. He knows it too. We're just friends. Aaron's eyes twitched. In reality, this was also nearly the same as what he was thinking. He had known a long time ago that a present did not mean anything, but at the same time, he had not been able to control his own thoughts. He simply did not want to see her have relations with any man, even if it was his younger brother. This was despite the fact that. He knew that he was being a little overbearing, given their initial agreement that he would not interfere with her personal life. He also clearly knew that logically he should not interfere with her work and social relations. Even if they were a real couple, they should still give each other freedom and personal space to make friends. However, Aaron actually wanted to go against their mutual agreement because of her. Now that he had heard Rachel say that the present was merely chosen by Blair, he unexpectedly seemed to feel much more at ease all of a sudden, like a warm day after a period of chill. His face also followed, and actually softened a little. Aaron said, "Even if you're just friends, don't you feel that giving him a watch is slightly too suggestive?" Rachel said, "Then what should I have given him? Forget it." With your level of intelligence, you wouldn't have been able to think of such things anyway. The next time you need to get a gift, you can let me know, and I'll get someone to help you choose it. Wouldn't that do? Then that's no different from you giving the present, Rachel said, even more incredulously. We're a married couple. What's the difference between me giving the gift and you giving it? Aaron asked. Rachel still had something to say, but. She caught a glimpse of a large amount of blood seeping through the bandage on Aaron's shoulder. Rachel was immediately shocked. "Good Lord, Aaron! Your shoulder is bleeding!" Aaron froze. He turned his head to the side to take a look. Raising his brow, he saw Rachel's face turn white from anxiousness. He could not bear to make her feel this way, and said coolly, "It's nothing. It's just a superficial wound." Doctor, doctor, come and take a look, quick! She hastily began yelling as she held Aaron's arm on one side. Does it hurt? It probably hurts a lot. Stop moving around recklessly. You're already in this state, but you're still not staying still. Now look what you did. It's bleeding. Aaron really felt that he had gone mad. Over the past two days, he had been so angry because of her, but now that he was seeing her so anxious, he also followed suit. He thought that making her worry a little was not wrong either. Then she would not push him away for no reason again and say that she hated him. Aaron said, "That's enough. Stop shouting. If you shout more, the doctor would think I'm about to die. I'm fine. I'm really fine." Rachel looked at the wound. The blood streamed down like water, and the expanse of bright red pricked at her eyes. How bad were his injuries exactly? Nevertheless. He had actually still kissed her so hard and spoken to her for so long earlier. Did he not know that he was very seriously injured? That he had just escaped the jaws of death? She also felt that she was to blame, knowing that he was ill. She still stood there watching him and speaking to him for so long. What exactly had he been through the night before to be so injured to this extent? Rachel really felt that. Although the people standing at the top of the pyramid were always looked up to, they had many more burdens to bear than others. Rachel felt truly sad and worried inside. Just then, she saw the doctors arrive. She quickly turned her head and asked, "Doctor, take a look at him quickly. Why did he start bleeding?" The doctors walked over in a hurry. 
They immediately saw the wound and began tidying it up together while in their white robes. Aaron sat there, unmoving. When the bandages on his shoulder were removed, Rachel covered her mouth, looking at the ghastly wound. She still could not imagine what exactly Aaron had experienced yesterday. His flesh seemed to have been torn apart by the explosion, and the entire expanse was badly mutilated. The bandages, which were soaked in fresh blood, scattered all over the floor. However, Aaron merely looked at his wound with his head turned to the side, without moving at all. It was as if the arm did not belong to him at all. The doctors only patched up everything and bandaged Aaron's wound anew after a lot of difficulties. Rachel looked at the staunch and unwavering Aaron. It was truly the first time she had met a man who was so formidable. He was so formidable that it seemed as if nothing could ever challenge his limits. What exactly had he been through while growing up that led him to become such a formidable man today? She thought to herself that Apart from the glamour of being in the Nixon family, there had to be even more unknown hardships that outsiders could not see. Aaron was a man. However, he had too much weight on his shoulders. He had no choice but to become powerful, more powerful than any ordinary man. Rachel could not help but sigh with emotion. As she looked at this unordinary man, she was moved by the determination on his face. Episode 334 How could you have gone through such a terrifying thing? A shade of grief appeared between her eyebrows. Her nose twitched and she really felt an urge to bear some of his burdens together with him. The doctor tidied up and checked each equipment again before asking Aaron cautiously, Do you find it difficult to breathe? No. If the pain is unbearable, we can continue to administer anesthesia. The doctor knew that the flesh in the wound had already rotted and was bound to be very painful. Yet Aaron merely moved his arm and said, No need. The doctor looked at Aaron in wonder and turned his head to tell Rachel, Madam, Mr. Nixon is truly impressive. If an ordinary person was injured to this extent, he would definitely have passed out from the pain already. Of course, a typical person would probably have been unable to survive after going through an explosion like yesterday. But his body is very strong, and so is his willpower. From what I saw today, he has probably passed the critical stage. The only thing to note is that the wound must not get infected. Hearing the doctor's words, Rachel's heart just ached again in absolute agony. Yes, he had stronger willpower than others did. Because he was Aaron. He had to be strong. Rachel looked at Aaron and nodded. I understand. The doctors walked out and quickly reported to the people outside that Mr. Nixon had already regained consciousness and was now fine. From outside, the doctors looked at Aaron, whose body was still stained with blood. With dreamy expressions on their faces, they said, Mr. Nixon is so handsome. Yes, he's really too handsome. Even when injured, he's still so handsome. I think that people who are injured have more of an unruly sexiness to them. Look, there are blood stains on him. It makes him seem so powerful. When he was sent here yesterday, his whole body was covered in blood. It really frightened me to death. I didn't think that he would look as if everything was fine today. How can Aaron be the same as an ordinary person? They say that the Nixon family brothers were sent overseas for special training back then. Of course, they must have experienced many major and minor injuries. Today's injuries must have been nothing to him. Rachel heard the discussions going on outside. She sighed and thought to herself that Aaron indeed aroused so many obsessive gazes everywhere he went. He was certainly Aaron. Rachel closed the door, seeing that Aaron's shoulder had already been wrapped up sturdily. She raised her head in slight distress and asked him, Does it hurt a lot? Aaron looked at Rachel and shook his head. Don't worry, it doesn't hurt. However, Rachel shook her head and asked, How can it not hurt? Aaron, was yesterday night very terrifying? Did you almost die? 
Rachel asked softly as she lay at the side and raised her head to look up at Aaron's face, which was slightly pale from having lost too much blood. Aaron huffed. Of course. It was just because you made me angry. I... Rachel thought about it. It was true that he had not stayed at home but went to the villa, only because they had been arguing that night. Such a serious incident would not have happened at home, given the tight security and a large number of guards. The more she thought about it, the more Rachel felt that she was the actual culprit who almost caused Aaron's death. Looking at Aaron, she said very apologetically, I'm sorry. I won't be so rebellious in the future. So, you really almost died? Aaron said, Because it was a suicide bomb. The personnel at the villa didn't discover it in time. Of course, I almost died, but fortunately, I had pretty good luck and managed to hide behind the table. Although he had, in fact, managed to hide behind the table, the force of the explosion had sent him flying out along with the table. His exposed shoulder had been badly mutilated by the debris from the explosion. The table had also shattered into pieces. Fortunately, apart from merely being shocked directly into unconsciousness, nothing much had happened to his body. However, compared to the nation's ambassador who had been reduced to dust right before his eyes, he was already fortunate enough. Upon hearing this, Rachel asked hastily, Then, that special ambassador, is he really dead? Hmm? Why was it so serious? The bomb went off right before his eyes. He had nowhere to hide. But it was also because he was in front of me and bore part of the impact. That's why I was all right. Intending to make her feel even more sorry for him, Aaron grunted, At that time, the only thought on my mind was that perhaps it would be better for me to die so that you wouldn't hate me so much. I'm sorry. I really don't hate you. Rachel's eyes even proceeded to moisten. As she imagined the distressing scene that night, she felt all the more that it was her fault. I won't do that again next time. I'm really sorry. Really, really. Even if he was in the wrong and misunderstood her, his safety came first. If her rebelliousness caused him to die outside, then she would not be the only one affected. Rachel's tears trickled down. Filled with self-reproach, she looked at Aaron. I'm sorry. Aaron had initially planned to merely scare Rachel a little, but he did not expect her to actually be frightened to tears. Watching her tears patter onto his hand, Aaron's heart melted, and he lifted her face with one hand. Rachel quickly covered her face in an attempt to hide it from him. Why are you looking at me? Let me go. I didn't wash my face. I'm so ugly right now. Aaron frowned. Move your hands. Let me see your face. I don't want you to see my face. She had not slept for the entire night and already looked dreadfully haggard. Her face was probably darkened and oily and she did not know how terrible she looked. On top of that, she had even begun to cry. Her eyes were swollen from crying and she looked like an ugly monster. She did not want Aaron to see her at all. Although he saw Rachel trying her best to cover her face, Aaron nevertheless lifted it. He looked at Rachel unwaveringly. Lowering his head, he gazed at her small, glistening face. At this moment, this woman's haggard face actually did not look ugly at all. Her skin was still as fine and smooth as milk. She merely looked much more tired than usual, and there were even faint dark circles around her eyes. However, he found her even more endearing. Her eyelashes were like butterfly wings fluttering with pearl-like tears on them. The slightly greenish hue made the contours of her face look even clearer. It looked white and soft and could not be described as dirty in any way at all. Unexpectedly, Aaron was not bothered by the fact that she had not washed her face. He simply held her face like that and kissed her gently again and again on her forehead, her cheeks, her nose, and her lips, before slowly releasing her. 
silly girl. Someone planned the attack on me for a very long time. It has nothing to do with you. Even if it didn't happen this time, sooner or later they would have found an opportunity to take advantage of a hole in our security. Of course, I can't hide at home all the time and not leave the house, right? He was a little vexed. He should not have criticized her and made her blame herself so much, especially when the incident was not really directly linked to her. Instead, he had made her cry by doing this. She had already been worried the entire night. He could not imagine how anxious she must have been seeing him like this. After all, a young lady like her had probably never encountered such a serious matter or seen such a severe injury. Episode 335 There's really nothing going on between you and Arnold, right? Furthermore, I'm really all right now. It just looks scary. He smiled. None of my muscles, bones, or internal organs got injured. At the time of the explosion, I wasn't that close to the bomb either. I was just kidding earlier. Seriously, Aaron said gently as he looked into her clear eyes. Rachel was not genuinely stupid. How could she not be able to tell that he was consoling her? She said, All right, then stop moving. Let's recuperate properly. Don't move around anymore just in case your wound starts bleeding again. You shouldn't touch me again, too. Stay still, all right? Rachel's face tickled from his kisses, and her cheeks were flushed slightly red, too. She stretched out her hands to pull the blankets over him. His clothes had been removed long ago because of his injury. There were even patches of small scratches on his sturdy, honey-colored body. Half of his shoulder on one side was tightly wrapped in white bandages as well, and he indeed looked particularly feral. As she looked at him, Rachel felt that he was like a precious jade that maintained its original character. He always looked good and did not display a sorry figure at all. Nevertheless, Rachel's heart still ached for him. Just then, Aaron patted the space beside him on the bed. Come here and lie down. Rachel shook her head vigorously. No, there are pieces of apparatus all over your bed. It's better for you to lie down and stay still. Stop moving around. Just come when I ask you to. Aaron raised his eyebrows high. Rachel said stubbornly, I really shouldn't. What if I touch your wound? Aaron stared steadfastly at Rachel's small face through narrowed eyes. He looked at her for a long time before suddenly saying, Come here. Otherwise, I'll carry you here. Which do you prefer? Rachel was still in a daze when Aaron actually reached out his hand directly to grab Rachel's arm. Shocked, Rachel hastily said, All right, all right. I'll get on the bed. Stop moving. Rachel pushed away the hand that he had stretched out and rested it horizontally for him. She glanced at Aaron helplessly and could only climb onto the bed first. At this, Aaron then calmly put his body at ease and sat back on the bed. Internally, Rachel was secretly scolding Aaron. He was really ridiculously overbearing. Why did he insist on making her climb onto the bed? Aaron looked down at Rachel, who was coming closer to him. He smiled faintly and stretched out a hand to tug at her arm, so that she was leaning into his embrace. Rachel continued to shift her little head uneasily. She looked up and said, No, what if I touch you? That's enough. Shut your mouth and stop talking. I need to rest. You do too. Close your eyes and sleep. Who on earth was as domineering as him? But I... I told you to sleep. Aaron looked at her with rapt attention. How could Rachel fall asleep now? Right now, the news reports outside were in a hideous mess. What exactly had happened? Who was the perpetrator? Would Aaron get injured again in the future? Rachel was still in the dark about all of these matters. While she was very tired, she simply did not feel sleepy. She was probably unable to sleep because the incident had occurred too abruptly, so she was still too anxious at the moment. Rachel looked up at Aaron. But I still can't sleep. 
Just then, Aaron suddenly lowered his head. His eyes approached her all of a sudden, making Rachel immediately think that he was about to knock into her. However, his face merely came close to hers, and he suggested coolly, Why don't I make you exercise? If I tire you out completely, then you'll sleep. The situation had already come to this, but he still had the impudence to think about such things. Seriously? Get lost. Hurry up and rest. Stop fooling around. How am I fooling around? As long as you desire it, my body can provide its services to you any time. He tapped her on the nose with his fingertip. When his finger came into contact with her tender skin, his caress made her feel all the more aroused. You... do you know that you're still ill? She warned him disbelievingly. Now was definitely not the time for him to toy around with her just because he wanted to. I'm wounded in the arm. Not anywhere else. Relax. No matter what, I'll definitely protect the parts that you use. I won't suddenly turn you into a grass widow. As he said this, the corners of his lips turned upwards in a smile. His eyes were fixed on her face since he liked to observe every minute change in her expression when he was teasing her. Even at present, he still seemed very spirited. Get lost! I... I... <laughs> that's not a body part for me to use. Of course it's for you to use. If you don't believe me, you can beckon it to you. Touch it a little. Call for it a little. It will immediately rise to the occasion for you. While saying this, Aaron went so far as to stretch out his hand. He suddenly grabbed her hand and was about to reach downwards. Rachel was so shocked that she hastily pushed his hand away carelessly. No way, no way! Aaron, are you mad? You're really ill right now. You're not allowed to move. Aaron said, Or do you think that my body can't take it since I'm injured? Should I show you some proof that I can do it any time? This small injury won't do anything to me. As Aaron said this, he tilted his body and used his uninjured hand to lift some strands of her hair before sweeping it aside. He looked at her pretty countenance and gazed deeply as he explored every inch of her facial expression. Rachel was so surprised that she quickly protested. Aaron, are you mad? Don't come any closer. I don't need proof. What is there to prove? You're great. You're the most impressive, and you've always been the most brilliant man. He was the most brilliant. Initially, Aaron had merely wanted to tease her a little. However, when he heard these words, his whole body genuinely began to heat up in restlessness. Oh, this woman. She really did not know what to say and what not to say. At this moment, he lowered his head and glanced at his body helplessly. He didn't know why he had surprisingly begun to get so aroused just because of her compliment. However, ever since meeting her, he always felt that his body no longer seemed to belong to him. That was why he said that it was really for her exclusive use. At times, it was genuinely under her command and not his own. This was precisely the case right now. Aaron just wanted to tease her at first, but now, he was the one suffering. Good girl, that's enough. Just let me kiss you, I won't touch you. Aaron looked at her passionately as he held her chin up between his fingertips. Gazing at her small face, he said, Come, let me see you. As he held her face up like this, Rachel only felt that his gaze was truly overbearing to the extreme. It was so domineering that it was difficult for her to resist. However, she was still afraid that his actions would be too large and would affect his wound. No way. You shouldn't be kissing me. Your wound hasn't even recovered. Be obedient. I'll be fine with just one kiss. Come, don't move. Behave yourself and stick out your tongue, he said before lowering his head and taking her lips into his mouth immediately. Since he could not touch her, he could only gently linger about her lips as an attempt to satiate his hunger. 
However, the more he wanted to satisfy his lust, the hungrier he became. He kissed her over and over again, until it became difficult to control himself. Then, he could only release her lips. Panting, he looked at Rachel's dazed expression. He slowly laid her down and pulled down the zipper on her pants. Episode 336 Sorry, I shouldn't have hurt you like this. Rachel was startled. He seemed to have had stolen her soul from her earlier, so she momentarily did not notice. It was only now that she felt him fiddling with her pants and rushed to block his hands. Aaron, no, Rachel said. Silly girl, I'm just taking a look. Aaron raised his head again and kissed her lips softly. In a trance, he said, I'm just taking a look. I won't touch you, just relax. Take a look? Take a look at what? Rachel said indistinctly. His increasingly superb kissing skills enticed her to the point where her body was going completely limp. She felt her mouth go numb as if it was no longer hers. Aaron pushed her pants aside and looked at her nether regions. Naturally, he had not yet forgotten the fact that she was injured. He pulled her pants off and saw that there were still traces of the injury on her. A few days had gone by, but the marks were still so obvious. He frowned deeply, and there were faint waves in his amber eyes. A sharp pain jabbed at his heart. He closed his eyes. He only spoke to Rachel after he seemed to have calmed down the hatred he felt towards himself. Rachel, I never wanted to hurt you. I didn't intend to hurt you. Everything that happened that day was not aimed at hurting you. I was just unable to control myself. It was not that he wanted to make himself feel better by hurting her. At the time, he simply persistently felt that he could obtain some comfort from her body. However, he had not expected her injuries to be so serious. Rachel listened as he brought up the incident again. As Rachel looked at him, she was able to understand his actions a little since she knew that he only got so angry because he had misunderstood her. Although she still resented him for mistreating her, she already felt much more at ease, especially since he had just narrowly escaped death. She now felt that nothing was more important than him being alive. As long as he was all right, she could let all bygones be bygones. Furthermore, she could tell that he was already feeling an immense amount of guilt. Recalling the guilt she had felt earlier, she thought that a person as morally upright as him would definitely be all the more unable to bear the fact that he had treated her that way before. Rachel said, All right, stop thinking about it. I can... I can understand it. You didn't do it on purpose. Let's not bring it up again in the future. No, if you decide that you don't ever want me to touch you because of this, I'll respect your wishes too. Aaron had genuinely never thought that he could be such a beast. Now that he knew that nothing was, in fact, going on between Rachel and Arnold, that she had not chosen the present carefully at all, and that he had misunderstood everything, the self-reproach and guilt he felt inside intensified even more. Rachel's heart had already started to warm as she looked at him. Immediately, the ignominy she had been feeling for the past few days seemed to dissipate considerably. Gazing at Aaron, she touched his elbow and said coolly, All right, don't think about these things anymore. Didn't you say you wanted to sleep? Quick, go to sleep. Aaron said, But... Rachel's cheeks were slightly flushed. She stretched her arms out and swiftly wound them around his neck. Slowly, she moved her lips closer to him. She was using the same method he used to deal with her against him. Hooked on her small, lilac-like lips, his heart immediately swelled up. She was the one who had approached him. As he inhaled her scent, he felt that her small mouth was really too sweet. It was too sweet. It was so sweet to the point that even his body was beginning to soften. He did not know how long it had been before they separated, both of them panting heavily. 
She heard the doctors outside about to come in to measure his temperature. As she sat there, she hastily adjusted her clothes and covered herself with the blanket without daring to look at his eyes. On the other hand, Aaron sat as straight as a ramrod. His pitch-black, gentle eyes were as tranquil as the deep night without any hint of unrest. He swiftly regained his composure and waited for someone to measure his temperature with an ear thermometer. The doctor said doubtfully, Mr. Nixon, your temperature is a little high. I'll get someone to take a look later. No need, Aaron continued. My temperature will lower on its own. Just give me some time. Huh? The doctor looked at Aaron in confusion. However, as he looked at his peaceful but abruptly chilling gaze, the doctor did not dare to ask any further. He could only nod his head frantically and leave quickly. Aaron only turned back to take Rachel in his arms when he saw the doctor leave. Rachel did not dare to look at him. She merely felt that she must have been so aggressive as to kiss Aaron only because her brain had short-circuited earlier. She had never been so aggressive towards a man. It really made her feel as if her face was about to start burning. However, Aaron's voice immediately turned much more tender. He smiled gloomily upon seeing that she was not looking at him. Hugging her, he said, All right, let's sleep. Rachel did not dare to say anything more. Right now, sleeping was the best choice. With her head smothered as she laid there, she could still smell the strong masculine scent of his body. It was mixed with a hint of blood. However, this seemed to make him smell even more masculine. As she smelled him, she seemed to feel an extraordinary sense of security and really fell asleep just like that. Meanwhile, Aaron could only look down at his aroused body and glance frustratedly at Rachel, who had fallen into a deep sleep in no time. At times, he really did not know what to do with her. The news of Aaron's injury was released the next day. The news outlets and the public immediately let out a collective sigh of relief upon finding out that Aaron was fine. However, the economy and the stock markets had also experienced some turbulence and had yet to recover. Numerous conspiracy theories were circulating wildly among the public and intensified the fear in the hearts of many people. News that Aaron was currently recuperating had been personally released by the Glass Palace. Only the past few days, media attention had been constantly focusing on Aaron's injury. Now that everyone knew that Aaron really was fine and that he had already passed the critical stage, they then began to wonder anew how exactly the incident had happened. Various versions of the events began to circulate, and some rumors really sounded like novels. At long last, Rachel had experienced for herself why people said that the entire nation would quake if the Nixon family merely stamped their feet. She did not expect that Aaron's injury would actually trigger so many responses like a chain reaction. Even the entire market economy immediately experienced an enormous upheaval. Aaron's location was sealed off. Naturally, ordinary people could not enter. Apart from when there were special items, no one else could get in either. However, there were still plenty of urgent matters for Aaron to deal with. From the time he regained consciousness, Aaron had not stopped at all. He met with various people, looked at various documents, and dealt with diverse matters. Rachel did not leave either. She watched from the side as Aaron dealt with these matters and served as his temporary secretary. She ran all over the place as she assisted him in pouring tea and delivering water, taking documents and sending things. When Aaron began to deal with his official business, he began to focus intently. He knew that Rachel was beside him, but did not bother about her. Rachel merely looked at Aaron from the side. Although he was wounded and was even bandaged with traces of broken skin all over his body, he still looked as dignified as ever. His decisiveness as he sat on the hospital bed was awe-inspiring. Episode 337 People were already going mad outside. 
He was also a little different from the Aaron she was used to seeing. Seeing that no one was coming, Rachel asked Aaron if she could excuse herself to call Blair. There were certain things that she still had not explained to Blair before coming here. She was afraid that it would affect her work. However, they were trapped in this place, and she was also worried that Aaron's safety would be affected. It was only at this moment that Rachel realized that she had not really paid attention to safety in the past. She only understood now why there was such tight security around Aaron. Aaron passed Rachel his phone and said to her, Use this to call her. It isn't necessarily unsafe to use your phone. But to be safe, use mine instead. Uh, aren't yours and mine the same? Rachel asked in confusion. Aaron darted a look at her and continued to look at the documents on the small table. He merely said quietly, Mine is equipped with more advanced anti-hacking software. Even the most sophisticated phishing tool in the world right now cannot detect my location, so... He shot another glance at Rachel. It's still different from yours. All right, then. They were on different wavelengths. Once again, he had schooled her on the ways of the wealthy. Nevertheless, Rachel knew that what he was saying was definitely true. With the phone in hand, Rachel went out to call Blair. Blair even hesitated a little when she picked up the call. Mr. Mr. Nixon? She had previously received a call with Aaron's voice on the line. At the time, she had been frightened to the point where she did not dare to make another sound. So this time, she was especially careful. No, it's me, Blair, Rachel said. Oh, it's you! You bad girl, you scared me to death! I was wondering why Aaron was calling me for no reason, especially during this emergency period. I thought they discovered that I was a spy or something like that. Of course, it's not that serious. It's just safer for me to use Aaron's phone to call you. They're afraid that someone is monitoring the conversation or something. You're in there, so of course, you don't know what's going on outside. The airport is still locked down for investigation. There are also special forces surrounding the entire city. Anyway, the situation really looks very serious, but everyone has been constantly discussing how exactly Aaron is. Is he all right now? Yes, apart from a slight injury in the shoulder, there's not much of a problem. Oh, did he get disfigured? Rachel said, who cares about whether he gets disfigured or not right now? The most pertinent question on everyone's mind right now is whether Aaron will become disfigured or not. Although very few people have actually seen what he looks like, everyone thinks that Nixon's, Mr. President and Arnold, are so handsome. So he must look very similar to them, too. Everyone has seen some secret snaps of him before, and they know vaguely that he's indeed very handsome. That's why everyone is wondering how exactly he's doing at the moment. Rachel could only say incredulously, All right, then. Actually, he's doing very well and didn't become disfigured either. That's great. This piece of information would definitely cost a fortune if I could sell it to the media. What? No, I'm just kidding. Do you think I'm so crazy that I would dare to sell news about Aaron? I reckon I'll be kidnapped before the news even reaches the media. But is there really nothing wrong with Aaron? You've been completely isolated from the outside world. None of the media outlets knows where exactly Aaron is receiving treatment. All of the major hospitals are crowded with reporters, but they simply can't find out where Aaron is. Yes, we're in a very well-concealed place. He's doing fine and is even dealing with work matters now. I called because I wanted to ask how things are at the company. Did my sudden departure cause any problems? Everyone thought that something happened to you because you had been taken away by a crowd of heavily armed people. We were all shocked. But when they later found out that you were all right, they were then confused about who exactly you were involved with to have been taken away like that. The company explained that 
you would have to delay filming for a few days because you had other schedules. Arnold didn't get involved in the matter. He said that it was all right since you had requested a leave of absence. Oh, that's good then. All right, don't worry about it while you're over there. I'll handle the company's affairs. Just look after Aaron. Hmm, yes. After hanging up the phone, Rachel saw Dr. Green and Penny Brady coming her way. The two of them were walking, accompanied by people equipped with weapons. Upon seeing Rachel, Penny Brady wanted to rush to her. However, she was forced back into her place by the armed personnel beside her. Rachel swiftly made her way over and said, It's all right. She's my friend. The people surrounding them looked at Rachel. Initially, when they had not known that she was Mrs. Nixon, they also treated her in this way. However, after Aaron had instructed them once, they finally found out that Rachel was in a position as respectable as Aaron. One by one, they began to treat her with respect as well. Penny Brady ran over to her and said, Good Lord! Making a trip here is a task too arduous. How are things going? Is Aaron doing fine? Yes, he's all right. Why are you two here? Penny Brady said, Dr. Green was the one who wanted to come, so I followed him here to broaden my horizons. Dr. Green said, I just came to take a look, too. To be honest, I'm not very well acquainted with external injuries. In no time, Dr. Green went in to discuss official matters with Aaron. Penny Brady did not go in and merely stayed outside to speak to Rachel. By the way, I can't get through to your phone. I was really worried to death about you, but Dr. Green said that the two of you would probably be together, so I followed him here to take a look. Rachel said, Because the situation was too urgent, I didn't inform you either. After coming here, I didn't dare to use my phone at all. But it's all right anyway. Just knowing that you and Aaron are both doing fine, I can be at ease. But I didn't expect Aaron's injury to cause such a huge stir. Rachel, you must be a little more careful in the future, Penny Brady said worriedly. Looking inside, Rachel pinched her fingertips and thought to herself, Yes, Aaron was precisely a person in such a prominent position. Even if he truly treated her very well and very gently too, and had never shown her how different they were, it did not mean that there was no distance between the two of them. There were times when their worlds were just so drastically different. No one could change this fact. When she saw Dr. Green come out, she shook her head and stopped thinking about it. As Dr. Green looked at Rachel, he found it surprising that despite the severity of the incident this time, she did very well in keeping a cool head. It looked like she did not drop the ball at all at such a crucial moment. He had initially thought that a young lady like her would have been frightened out of her wits a long time ago in a situation like this. He felt as if he was seeing Rachel in a new light. Penny Brady left together with Dr. Green. As Penny Brady had begged Dr. Green to bring her along, after they left, he said directly to Penny Brady while driving, Remember your promise to treat me to a meal. Penny Brady pursed her lips, thinking of the fact that she had done this for Rachel's sake. She could only say, Fine, fine. I'll let you take advantage of me this time. How stingy, Penny Brady thought. He was earning so much money and still wanted a commoner like her to treat him to a meal. After some time, they arrived at the neighborhood where Penny Brady lived. To Dr. Green, this place had already become familiar to him. Although he had made her work alongside him merely because he wanted to teach her a lesson at the start, he did not think that they would meet so often that they were together almost all the time. Episode 338 What is that Lena Cooper up to? They arrived at Penny Brady's house and she was about to get out of the car when she thought of something. She looked up and asked, Aaron's situation looks very dangerous. Will Rachel be in danger too because she's with Aaron? Dr. Green said, Aaron's life was always this dangerous. Did you think that the security personnel around him was there for decoration? You're right. He has so many bodyguards around him. 
Previously, Penny Brady had thought that they were merely there for show. Why were there so many people at Aaron's side when no ill had befallen him at all? She had thought that those people were just there to block nosy reporters, media outlets, or everyday people. She did not expect these people to actually be of use today. Dr. Green said, it's not the first or second time that Aaron's life has been in peril anyway. But this time, the incident was more severe than usual and all the media outlets discovered it. That's because the person who died was the nation's special envoy and a bombing even took place that killed so many security personnel on the spot. When Penny Brady heard this, she asked perplexedly, So, Aaron actually even encountered incidents like this one before? Yes. In the past, he was the target of a shooting incident, a car accident, and many other assassination attempts. Of course, none were successful. I remember that one time, it was the Cooper family's darling daughter, Lena, who came forward to save his life. That's why the Nixon family has always taken pretty good care of Lena Cooper, even until now. The old master is also fond of her. Lena Cooper? Ah, oh, I know her. A while ago, they were saying that she had something going on with Aaron. There's seriously no such thing as a good man. Is he planning to repay the favor by being in a relationship with her? If so, why did he marry Rachel back then? Are you a fool? What relationship does he have with her? It's obviously just media speculation. Recently, Melissa Henrys has become much more well-behaved and has probably given up. Since the media couldn't photograph them together anymore, they thought that Aaron was in a relationship with someone else. But Lena Cooper is indeed a very formidable woman. Otherwise, she wouldn't have been able to maintain her reputation as the number one socialite in the nation for so many years. She's really good at winning the favor of others. <laughs> I don't think she's a match for our Rachel in terms of appearance, either. She still wants to compete with Rachel, even though she's inferior to our Rachel in every way. Her family background is better than Rachel's. You may not be familiar with the Cooper family, but you're definitely aware of the Hub Mall, right? It's a major location in nearly every city. This mall belongs to the Cooper family. Penny Brady said angrily, I'll never buy anything from that mall ever again. Their family doesn't need a customer like you either. Hearing this, Penny Brady became even more incensed and stuck her tongue out at him. All crows in this world are equally black, just as all men are equally bad. She ran off after she finished speaking. When Penny Brady entered the house, her younger sister ran up to her and said, I did some research. Your boss is Dr. Green, right? Yes. Why? It's nothing. Did you know that he's actually part of the influential family of doctors that left the country during the revolt back in the day? According to rumors, their family is very impressive and very wealthy. The entire family took up permanent residence in Texas. Look, look, there's news about his family here. It states that his family has a house in Texas. That's like a huge castle. Penny Brady looked at Bernadette. Just say exactly what you want to say. If you don't properly grasp this person, where else will you be able to find such a good man in the future? Hey, you should sober up, Penny Brady continued. What's so special about me that would make me appealing to men? That's true, too. Bernadette looked at her before suddenly moving closer to her again. But you can introduce me to your boss. There's nothing special about you, but I'm special. Since I was young, I was more beautiful, more talented, and more charming than you as well. It'd be better for you to dispel that notion as soon as possible. There's no way he would even spare you a glance. Furthermore, he's not at all as approachable as you think he is. Penny Brady shook her head, pulled the door open, and went into her room. In a fit of anger, Bernadette went to complain to her mother. Mother, look! Penny's just a lackey, but she started to look down on me now. Huh. All right, I'll reprimand her later. Go in first and tidy up your clothes. Look at what you're wearing. It's full of holes. This is called fashion. What do you know? Strutting vainly, 
Bernadette walked into her room. It was impossible for Penny Brady to renege on her promise to treat Dr. Green to a meal. Seeing that Dr. Green had chosen a place that clearly looked expensive, Penny Brady felt that even her heart was aching. After they sat down and started eating, Dr. Green could not help his urge to laugh when he saw her constipated expression. Why? Are you unhappy to treat me to a meal? I'm happy. I'm happy. Why would I be unhappy? Penny Brady replied quickly. Dr. Green said, Then what's with that expression on your face? I... I have this expression when I eat something extremely delicious. Penny Brady began to spout nonsense. Dr. Green smiled wordlessly. Just then, he heard a sudden sound from outside. Penny! Why are you here? Bernadette rushed in immediately. Without even glancing at Penny Brady, she looked at Dr. Green. She bore a striking resemblance to a wolf staring greedily at its food. Penny thought that even her saliva was about to dribble down her lips. Penny Brady immediately stood up hastily. Bernadette, why are you here? I, I came here to eat. Enough of that. The food here is so expensive. Can you even come here? Why, why can't I come here? I can spend my entire month's salary on this one meal, can't I? Bernadette looked at Dr. Green and quickly smiled. She said, Dr. Green, why are you here eating with my older sister? Penny Brady saw how she was about to pounce on him and knew that she must have followed her here. Dr. Green said rudely, I got acquainted with your older sister a long time ago. What's wrong with us eating together? Ah, you knew each other from a long time ago. Could it be that you two have some special relationship? Although Bernadette absolutely did not believe that they would be in some special relationship, she was still looking at the two of them cautiously right now, as if she was afraid that there really was something going on between them. However, Dr. Green merely said coldly, I'm afraid that this is something between me and your sister. After getting shut down like that, Bernadette momentarily did not know what to say. She stood there and asked, How can this be a matter of just you two? The identity of my sister's boyfriend is a family matter. If you have some special relationship with my sister, then you must tell me. For a man to stay by my sister's side, he must obtain my strict approval. Dr. Green said, If you say so. He looked at Penny Brady. Penny Brady instantly retreated into herself. For some reason, she felt that there was something off about his gaze. Dr. Green broke into a smile and said, Indeed, your sister and I do have a special relationship. What? Bernadette looked at Penny Brady challengingly. How dare she actually lie to her? She even spoke as if she had nothing going on with Dr. Green. Episode 339 Why are there so many wounds on your body? Bernadette said, it, Impossible. My sister never told her family before, and we arrange dates for her all the time. If you two really have a relationship, how could she possibly not tell us? Arranging dates? Dr. Green glanced at Penny Brady opposite him. Penny Brady quickly said, Hey, Bernadette, what nonsense are you talking about? Please leave since there's nothing for you here. Stop making the situation worse, all right? What's wrong, sis? Why didn't you tell us that you already had a boyfriend? Or is your relationship with Dr. Green not legitimate? It's... It's illegitimate! Penny Brady couldn't stand it any longer. She looked at Dr. Green, then pulled Bernadette along and quickly walked out. Why are you pulling me? Did I say something wrong? Tell me, do you have some other relationship with him? Do you? Fine, sis. Are you being played by him? Or were you cheated by him? If he doesn't allow you to tell others about your relationship, that means he is playing you. Are you that stupid? Enough! Penny Brady shoved her out and asked angrily, Have you said enough? Do you follow me here to create trouble for me? Go away! Stop talking nonsense! Hmph! 
this? Why are you pushing me out so fast? Are you afraid that I'll snag your lover? Just hear yourself talk, Penny Brady speechlessly said. I'm only telling you the truth, sis. If you don't give me something this time, I'll go home and tell Mom that you're screwing around outside. Bernadette was angry and jealous. She looked at Penny Brady and wondered what was really so good about her that Dr. Green would fancy her. Even if they weren't in love and were simply playing around, Penny Brady didn't look appropriate at all. Penny Brady looked speechlessly at her. What do you want? Money, Bernadette said directly. If you give me enough money, I will shut up. Or if you can't give me money, I'll go to Dr. Green myself. Come back here. Penny Brady pulled her sister back. Fine. Stop being annoying. I'll give you the money. How much do you want? I want a million. Stop it. Penny Brady looked speechlessly at her. Are you mad? He's so rich. Can't he spare one million? Bernadette said. Penny Brady took out her wallet and gave her one hundred. I only have this. Take it or leave it. You, this is too little. You're with such a rich man and you're giving me so little. Aren't you being too stingy? Penny Brady scoffed. How much money I have is none of your business. Furthermore, this is already all that I can give you right now. Dr. Green and I are not what you think at all. I'm giving you this because you're my sister, okay? Go on your way. It's not even enough for my shoes, Bernadette said disdainfully. Your shoes cost a thousand? You... Where did you get so much money, Bernadette? Realizing that she had said too much, Bernadette quickly stuffed the money in her pocket and vaguely said, Fine. I won't disturb you and Dr. Green. You guys can carry on with your meal. I'll make a move first. Also, sis, since he's still interested in you now, quickly get more money from him and change that poor look of yours. You're basically wearing rags. Then Bernadette ran away. You! Come back here! You haven't told me where you got the money to buy such expensive shoes. Penny Brady still wanted to chase after her, but Dr. Green grabbed hold of her hand. All right. She's already gone. There's no point in asking. Come on, let's eat. But your sister is really different from you, Dr. Green looked at her and said. Penny Brady replied, she's been spoiled at home. Yes, that can't be helped then. Your family can only endure it in the future. Dr. Green spoke as he gazed in the direction where Bernadette left. Penny Brady glared at him, but she also knew that he was right. Bernadette was spoiled by the family, and it was getting out of hand. Nobody was able to control her now. Bernadette turned back to watch Dr. Green bring her own sister in. She then looked at Dr. Green's expensive car and felt very indignant. She thought for a while, picked up her phone, and called someone. My sister hooked a big fish, eh? Don't talk about how wealthy he is. I think I can buy that bag you talked about last time. Help me reserve one. I'll get money from my sister next time. Aaron's wounds looked a lot better. Rachel was at the side and helping him with the bandages. The wounds were scabbing over, but they still looked so scary. Her heart ached and subconsciously became much gentler to him. Aaron looked at how careful Rachel was. He pulled his own clothes and said, I'll do it myself. You're too slow. Rachel quickly said, Hey, I can't let you do that. Don't move. I'll do it. Rachel looked at the wounds on his body and thought that it would definitely leave a huge scar even if it healed. She couldn't help but feel a heartache. A huge scar on such a beautiful body. Rachel remarked, There's going to be a scar. The wound here looks big. Aaron looked and said, It's all right. The scar will subside because I recover quickly. Otherwise, my body would already have all kinds of patches. Hearing Aaron say that, Rachel could only sigh and hope for the best. She said, You've probably never had such serious injuries in the past. Aaron replied, Yes, this is the first time I had such a serious wound. However, all my scars have already faded.
take a look. Aaron pointed at a faint line. This was from a knife. See? It's not obvious. Rachel took a close look and could only see a little bit. Yes. But when was he stabbed by a knife? Aaron pointed below. This was a gunshot wound. You can see a dot where it grazed past my shoulder. Rachel pried open below and indeed saw a dot. His skin tone was too even, so she couldn't tell at all when she normally looked at him. But up close, it was still visible. Rachel looked at Aaron. How did he get so many wounds? Aaron noticed that she was staring at him. He speechlessly patted her head. All right, I know that I'm very handsome, but you don't have to keep staring at me like that. Get lost. Who thinks that you're handsome? Huh? Rachel speechlessly retorted. Aaron's face immediately stiffened as he looked at Rachel and asked, I'm not handsome? Rachel looked at his sullen eyes and could only say, Fine, fine, you're handsome. You're the most handsome. You're the most handsome man I've ever seen. Aaron heard this and smiled, but he suddenly thought of something and asked, Am I handsome or is Arnold handsome? How did Arnold get dragged into this? You and Arnold are different. Episode 340 What did you feel towards me in the beginning? As Rachel spoke, she saw Aaron's eyes turn sullen once again. His stare penetrated her even more and she quickly said, You're handsome. Of course it's you, Aaron. Arnold is handsome too, but he's not my type. Aaron's face immediately returned to normal but he still looked unhappily at her. Think carefully before you answer next time. Yes, yes, yes. You're the more beautiful and handsome man in the world. She could only say this because he was ill. Aaron said, all right, you're really terrible at lying. Rachel looked speechlessly at Aaron. How did I never realize how prideful you are? Aaron retorted, I also never realized how stupid you are before. Idiot, Rachel said. If I knew you were such a difficult person to please, I definitely wouldn't have married you. Aaron looked at Rachel. If I knew you were so mentally challenged, I wouldn't have married you either. Hey, so you thought that I was very clever at the beginning, Rachel asked curiously. Of course. If you're able to drug me at the hotel, I think that your intelligence shouldn't be too low. Hey, that is child's play. I only bribed my way into the hotel and drugged the pure water. But you never thought that the person drugged would be me? Yes. How could I possibly think that? I also didn't think that Arnold was some special person. I thought that he was just a celebrity. If she knew that the Nixon family was not to be trifled with, she wouldn't have dared to drug him, even if she had ten times the courage back then. However, she was angry at that time. She didn't expect to land herself in another world where she was exposed to so many things for the first time. This was unimaginable back then. Very well. You didn't know who exactly your opponent was and daring to drug them. Your intelligence is really limited. Perhaps the people I come into contact with are all very calculative, so I must have been mistaken at the start. <laughs> yes, so are you especially regretful marrying me? You thought that I was somebody special, but I'm actually not. Rachel thought that she was just such a normal and simple person. He must be regretting it. No, I don't regret it. You're very special. He thought that she was not at all average since so many people liked her. He always thought that she must have had some superpower that made her so attractive. And he gradually didn't dislike her that much. Instead, he couldn't reject anything to do with her. He touched her forehead. Especially silly. You only know how to sweet talk me. Do you dare to say that you didn't hate me at the beginning? You were especially annoyed with me at first. That's why you always looked constipated every time you saw me. Yes, I did find you annoying, Aaron said. Rachel's face fell and then warmed up after a long time. She thought, forget it. 
It wasn't the first day he didn't know how to talk. Wishing he could sweet talk was as good as wishing he could act like Arnold. Aaron continued, but eventually, I got used to it. I was annoyed the moment I saw you and wondered why I married you. After all, I only stayed at the hotel for one night and you barged in sneakily. You even drugged me. You have no idea how many dangerous situations I've been in in this life, but that was the only time I found it especially ridiculous. So every time I look at you, I think about how I actually took that kind of drug and even did those things with you uncontrollably. It made me angry. Aaron thought about that day's events. The moment he opened the door to the bedroom, he saw a rowdy woman inside. He thought that he was dreaming. He never came across such a thing in his life. But in the next moment, there were already changes in his body. He couldn't control himself and wanted to pin this woman who looked like a lost deer onto the bed. Rachel innocently said, I didn't expect it either. I was still preparing a camera inside when I heard you come in. I thought it was Arnold and I was frightened out of my wits. In the end, the man who came in was you and you immediately lunged at me. I should be the victim here. I was even shouting for help, but nobody heard me. She could still clearly recall when he entered. Before she could take a good look at his face, his tall body was already coming at her. But now that she thought about it, his scent wasn't distasteful and his body wasn't detestable. It was just rough. He even ignored her protests and went in. She was completely stunned at that time. She couldn't react for a long time and couldn't believe what was happening. Aaron said, What's the use in shouting for help? My men only listen to my orders. Nobody will come in without pressing the doorbell. Also, the hotel's soundproofing was extremely strong, and my room was extra soundproof. Even if you screamed your lungs out, nobody would have heard you. <laughs> you were so rough, so forceful, and you didn't have any skills. What did you say? Aaron's eyes shifted to Rachel. Rachel saw Aaron's face immediately darken as if he was going to swallow her up. She quickly distanced herself from him. What's wrong? Wasn't that the case? It was your first time, and you were like a pile driver. You only knew how to go in and out and didn't know anything else. Am I not telling the truth? Aaron's face immediately sank further. Rachel, come over here and talk. Aaron gestured at her. Rachel asked, What are you going to do? No way I'm going there. Be good. Come here when I tell you to. Aaron's eyes darkened. When his dark eyes stared at her, they were filled with temptation. However, Rachel was not going to fall for it. No, come here if you have the guts. I'm not going to you. Aaron's eyes flashed. Whether I have the guts or not, don't tell me you don't know. Rachel's face flushed red. She looked at him undefeated and said, You used to. Now I'm not so certain since you're injured. Who knows if you won't be just a useless pretty face in the future. Aaron's face darkened again. He looked at Rachel and ordered, Come here. I'm not going over. I would be asking for death. There's no way I'm going. Rachel stuck out her tongue at him from a distance. Aaron thought that he must have spoiled her too much recently. Was she really not afraid of him now? She actually bickered with him like this. If you come here now, I can still pardon you. Otherwise, don't blame me. No, no, no. You're a sick cat now anyway, so you can't come down the bed. I won't fall for your tricks. Uh, I think there's someone outside. I'll go check it out. <laughs> you can't catch me. Rachel laughed as she hurriedly ran out. Aaron sat still and looked at the condition of his body. Indeed, he couldn't get off the bed. He could only give up and speechlessly watch Rachel leave. This brat. If it was anyone else, they wouldn't have dared to be so disrespectful to him and talk to him this way. Only she dared to climb on top of his head and bicker with him now. If anyone saw her do that to him, they would have already been scared out of their wits. 
Episode 341 Lena Cooper suddenly had confidence out of nowhere. Watching Rachel run out, the people outside were extremely surprised. They stared at Rachel as if she was a strange creature. This last was too brazen. Aaron held formalities in high regard and she dared to run over to disturb Aaron. They were really breaking out in cold sweat for her. However, Aaron seemed unaffected and they shifted their eyes away, feeling even more surprised. It looked like Aaron was rather good to his secret wife. They actually didn't have a bad impression of Rachel. She looked very boisterous now, but she would immediately stop talking and stand behind humbly when the occasion called for it. She was not arrogant and she didn't hinder the business. She carried the title of Mrs. Nixon all this while, but she didn't have a tinge of stubbornness. This comforted people a lot. Rachel was just talking when she saw a person say that someone was looking for Aaron. Rachel answered and saw that Lena Cooper was already walking in with a few people. Lena Cooper was here. Seeing Rachel in here, Lena Cooper's eyes deepened. Aaron actually allowed her to enter such an important place. She really wondered what trick this foul brat used to make Aaron trust her that much. Rachel looked at Lena Cooper and noticed a man behind her. He was tall, handsome, and looked very proper. Perhaps because she had seen too much of Aaron, Rachel didn't feel anything when she saw such a handsome man. She only looked at him with a little confusion. She heard Lena Cooper plainly say to the man, You can go in first. I saw someone I know. Rachel then realized that the man was Blake Cooper. So he was Anna's husband. Blake Cooper looked at Rachel and said politely, You must be Mrs. Nixon, Anna's sister-in-law. Hello, I am Blake Cooper. Hello, I'm Rachel Olson. You can just call me Rachel. Okay, I'm here to see Aaron. You two can have a chat. I'll go ahead and find him first. Oh, all right. Rachel looked at Blake Cooper and was not surprised that Anna would like him. He looked very handsome. He was tall and he had an excellent disposition. But his sister was... Lena Cooper watched her brother go in before asking Rachel, Why are you here? Rachel replied, Why can't I be here? As Aaron's wife, there shouldn't be a problem if I'm here. <laughs> I just feel that a person of your status has never seen anything. Are you sure that you won't end up spoiling things here? Rachel naturally began to feel uncomfortable. To be insulted like that, she only felt that this person was extremely annoying. It was not because she had some latch on Aaron, but Rachel really hated her because she was truly annoying and prejudiced. Rachel asked, Miss Cooper, what's the point of bringing me down all the time? Lena Cooper replied, I'm really curious as to why Aaron would marry a person like you. You're not compatible with Aaron, and you know it yourself. But you're still staying and hindering Aaron. That's why I want to bring you down. Seeing her speak so directly, Rachel really didn't think that such a person could exist on Earth. Since Aaron married me, it goes to show that I have my merits. Of course, you wouldn't know about it. <laughs> I know you have merits. That face of yours is passable. But he'll get sick of it sooner or later. So, Rachel, I advise you to consciously leave Aaron sooner rather than later. Otherwise, when you're personally chased off by me, that won't look nice. Rachel really did not know where that confidence of hers came from. That woman believed that Aaron would definitely be hers. Try me, Rachel said. Lena Cooper scoffed and walked ahead in her heels. She turned her head slightly to look at Rachel. You saw what happened today. Why do you think that I can come in here? This was the benefit of having a powerful background. No average person could come in here. But I am not an average person. Aaron and I share the same world. So even if Aaron shuts off the entire world, I can still enter his. You have no idea what Aaron and I went through together. I've known him for many years and I understand a lot more than you ever will. This is my advantage. 
Then she looked at Rachel contemptuously and walked in. Lena Cooper knew that Rachel was rather difficult to handle. She initially thought that Rachel played just a small role, but she didn't expect Rachel to already have curried favor with the Nixon family and even make David Nixon so fond of her. But to Lena Cooper, the biggest problem was still Melissa Henry's, who had a similar family background as her. Aaron and Melissa Henry's relationship was too deep, unlike this poverty-stricken small artist in front of her. Open the door! She stood at the entrance and said to the bouncers. The bouncers heard their conversation just now. Looking at Lena Cooper's proud demeanor, they secretly thought that she was too tyrannical. Furthermore, she was pretty, but it wasn't enough to make them like her. Rachel normally didn't let them open and close the door after her. She always opened and closed the door by herself. When they helped her, she even thanked them. Although Lena Cooper was the country's top socialite, Rachel was Mr. Nixon's wife. The bouncers stood there and did not budge. They only glanced at Lena Cooper and pretended not to hear her. Lena Cooper was stunned. She looked at both of them. I asked you to open the door. Didn't you hear me? Just then, Rachel spoke from behind. All right, since there are people here, you guys can go keep watch over there. There's no need to guard this area. The bouncers heard Rachel, immediately straightened up and replied, Yes. After that, they marched ahead. Lena Cooper didn't expect them to treat her this way. She angrily grabbed one of them and asked, What's the meaning of this? You guys pretended not to hear what I said just now, and now you are leaving? Just with a word from Rachel? Are you guys intentionally out to embarrass me? The bouncer plainly looked ahead and replied coldly, We only need to listen to Mr. Nixon and Madame's instructions. We don't take orders from anyone else. Lena Cooper knew that the Nixon family's guards were all like this. They would absolutely not take anyone else's orders, no matter who or how powerful that person was. These highly trained people were almost like mechanical soldiers. But now they indeed embarrassed Lena Cooper this time. She turned around and stared daggers at Rachel behind, grunted, and pushed the door open to go in. Seeing Lena Cooper this way, the bouncers felt that Rachel was an even greater person and wished that Aaron would never switch out his wife. They bowed to Rachel and left. Episode 342 How Shameless to Display Affection in Public When Lena Cooper entered, she saw Aaron and instantly changed her attitude. She hurried to him and whined, Aaron, you really scared me. I thought something had happened to you. Aaron took one look at her and then saw Rachel behind carrying a tray in. It was time to eat and usually the two of them ate together by themselves. Today, both ladies were actually here. Aaron asked, Have you eaten? Huh? Seeing as he didn't answer her, Lena Cooper looked at him glumly and felt rather angry. However, she quickly smiled gently and said, I have. Oh, then we won't stand on ceremony. Take a seat. We'll be done very soon. Aaron waved his hand and gestured for Rachel to come to him. Rachel took the tray to him and Aaron frowned. Why are you carrying the food? Where is the maid? He looked deeply into her eyes and took over the tray. Rachel said, It's all right. I saw that there were people inside, so I didn't call for the maid. Eat now. Aaron held the tray with one hand, but somehow the tray tilted, and everything on it fell to the ground. The white plates shattered on the floor. Rachel got a shock and quickly said, Oh no! Everything is broken! She quickly bent down and picked up the broken pieces. Aaron watched her reach out for the broken pieces, and he quickly said, Enough! Stop moving! But it was too late. A shard already cut Rachel's hand as she grabbed it. Ouch! Rachel winced. Aaron immediately dropped down to the floor. He frowned and pulled her hand to him. Stop moving! Look at you! You're such a klutz! I... 
Without waiting for Rachel to say anything, Aaron already put her finger into his mouth. Ah! Don't do that! It's dirty! Rachel exclaimed and tried to withdraw her hand. Aaron's cold eyes flashed. He grabbed her firmly and said, I said stop moving! The tongue licked the drop of blood on her fingertip. He held her hand, looked closely, and said, Okay, the wound is not deep. As he spoke, he single-handedly carried Rachel up. Rachel exclaimed and hugged his neck. She looked at Aaron. Put me down. I'm all right. Why are you carrying me? Don't move. There are shards everywhere. What are you going to do when you clumsily step on them? But... Aaron didn't say anything else and put her down on the bed. Rachel still wanted to move, but Aaron looked over coldly and said, Don't move. Aaron stared at Rachel and said, Let the maids do those things next time. Do you hear me? Rachel could only say, If you didn't grab it, it wouldn't have fallen. Aaron shot another look at Rachel. Only she dared to talk back at him. He gestured for the staff to clean up. Rachel looked warmly at him. He was fierce to her, but she knew that he did it for her own good. Aaron was used to being fierce to her, but each time, it was for her own good. Rachel looked gratefully at him. As Aaron stood on the ground with half of his body covered in gauze, Rachel thought that he looked so handsome. Across them, the Cooper siblings watched Aaron and Rachel in surprise. Lena Cooper didn't expect Aaron to treat Rachel so well. He who never needed to lift a finger actually helped Rachel hold things personally. And he wasn't afraid of dirtying himself since he put Rachel's finger into his mouth and carried her to the bed. Meanwhile, the maids seemed to be already accustomed to such scenes. They quietly cleaned up and systematically tidied the place so quickly that it was spick and span in no time. Lena Cooper could only think of that image when Aaron carried Rachel. She felt envious and jealous at the same time, engulfing her until it was almost unbearable. Aaron was so suave. Despite his injury, it didn't affect his heroic manner at all. In fact, he was much manlier. He didn't wear any clothes except for a pair of pants. The pants hung low at his waist, making him appear more slender and his pelvic lines more prominent. His long legs were much longer than others. No wonder his figure was so wonderfully proportioned. When he carried Rachel, it made Lena Cooper wish that she was the person in his arms. It would have certainly felt nice to touch his beautiful skin. But Rachel was the one he carried. That good-for-nothing Rachel. Blake Cooper watched the two of them, smiled, and stood up first. He said to them, It looks like we came at the wrong time. How about this, Aaron? I'll talk to you in detail another time. Then I won't disturb you and Rachel. He looked at Rachel and smiled. I won't disturb your meal. Aaron heard this and nodded, not persuading them to stay. Lena Cooper looked at Rachel in contempt and said to Aaron, I think this place is actually rather shabby. Why not come to our mountain villa? If you'd like, come over to our mountain villa to recuperate. It's a much better environment than here, and we have attendants too. Lena Cooper talked and glanced at Rachel at the side as if to say that she and Aaron were from the same world. Her family had a mountain villa, maids, and everything else. In comparison to this clumsy lass, she was better by countless miles. Rachel knew that she was saying all those on purpose for herself to hear, but she didn't shun away. Instead, she sat there and gazed steadily back at Lena Cooper. Aaron's voice was cool. No need. Do you think that the Cooper family's attendants are better than the Nixon family's? Lena Cooper was taken aback and didn't know what to say again. No household's attendants could be as professional, steadfast, silent, and loyal as the attendants in the Nixon family. 
even the attendants of the Cooper family wouldn't catch Aaron's eyes. Lena Cooper was filled with anger. He didn't even look at her in the eye as he let her leave. Lena Cooper took one final look at Rachel. With no other reason to stay, she could only go out. When they got outside, Blake Cooper then asked Lena Cooper, Are you done? I think your time is up. I've never seen Aaron so protective of a woman before. Not even with Melissa Henry's. No, Aaron is just putting on an act for me. He only wants me to give up, Lena Cooper insisted. But he is still different towards me. You see, when has he ever been so magnanimous with another woman? And take a look at how many women have gotten close to him. Still, he lets me get close to him. Lena Cooper spoke and scoffed. That Rachel is nothing. She is merely a tool. One day, Aaron will personally throw her out of the Nixon family. Episode 343. The President's Affair Was Exposed. Then, Lena Cooper lifted her high heels and strutted out. In her heart, she thought that Aaron would never fall in love with a person like Rachel. Because Rachel simply couldn't match up to herself. How could Aaron's taste be that bad? But she thought that she definitely must have a plan to make Aaron utterly hate Rachel. Rachel watched them leave, and the attendants brought in another serving of food. She then sat down and said, Miss Cooper seems very close to you. Aaron said, She's just a kid. Don't bother about her. But the Cooper family seems very capable, Rachel said again. Aaron said, What has that got to do with her? Rachel said, I just wonder if I'm a little too useless. My family is terrible. My background is terrible. I'm such a klutz and I don't know anything. You also said that my intelligence is poor. I... Aaron's brow furrowed and a cold, murderous look flashed across his eyes. Did somebody say something to you? Huh? No. I'm just saying because that's what you've been saying about me. Aaron could talk about her. But if anyone dared to speak ill of her, Aaron felt that he would never let this person live. Aaron calmed down and looked at Rachel. When I say that, I'm just comparing you to me. You are indeed useless compared to me. Aaron looked at Rachel. But if you are really useless, you wouldn't have accomplished what you have today. You also wouldn't have made my mother, grandfather, and entire family like you. All the more, you wouldn't have made the maids at home acknowledge you as Mrs. Nixon. Thus, you can't possibly be useless. Rachel looked at Aaron. Really? Then, do you think I have any merits? Aaron looked at Rachel's chest. You have two outstanding areas. Huh? Really? Where? She really didn't know what merit she had. Her eyes met Aaron's, but saw that he was staring at her. She froze and followed his gaze. Aaron! Aaron smiled faintly. Yes, it's rather outstanding. Rachel looked at him angrily with her hands on her waist. Aaron raised his hand and rubbed her head. All right, don't think so much. To be fancied by me and become my woman is already meriting in itself. Rachel only looked speechlessly at him. Why does it feel like you're praising yourself? My taste has always been pretty good, so relax. You're certainly not useless. That's why I fancied you. While your intelligence is poor, you lack manners, and you fail in everything, of course, those are all in comparison to me. If you compared yourself to an average person, you're definitely better, because you are Aaron's woman. This point already makes you better than any other woman in the country. Rachel hesitated slightly. She gazed at Aaron, suddenly feeling a sense of satisfaction slowly filling her. He said that she was his woman. 
This kind of tyrannical saying always made her feel a ridiculous sense of belonging. Especially when he said it. He looked so sexy. Before they could finish eating, Edward Nixon suddenly came to visit. Rachel immediately hopped out of the bed and left the entire space to the two brothers. She felt that Aaron really suffered. He couldn't even rest for one full day in the ward. Edward Nixon brought guards from the glazed tile palace, and a bunch of them noisily stood outside. When Rachel walked out, she was escorted by Aaron's guards to another room in the sanitarium. The guards took exceptional care of her, and it moved her deeply. She thought about Aaron's words and felt that they were so nice to her. This really proved that she wasn't entirely useless. Lena Cooper was the annoying one, no matter how much she had. Meanwhile, inside. Edward Nixon said to Aaron, News about Blair and I have been leaked out. Aaron looked at him in astonishment. What did you say? Edward Nixon placed the report in front of Aaron. Perhaps they took advantage of the chaotic news that was leaked out. Maybe this mess was also caused by one person. Anyway, the photo of me and that woman. I'm afraid that we can't protect it. Aaron looked at the news and instantly thought that it was so long ago, but it was still here. This also meant that the person behind this must have planned it for a long time. The girl in the picture was blurred, but the man was extremely clear. It was Edward Nixon standing there, naked and not moving, but with her naked body lying on the bed. It was too obvious. Aaron asked, wasn't the report stopped? We only managed to stop one, but it still quickly spread. Edward Nixon spoke with solemn eyes. Aaron chuckled and leaned on the bed. Why not just claim that she's your fiance? Aaron! Okay, I won't joke around. Call your secretary in. We'll discuss how to handle this. It's obvious that someone is trying to drag the Nixon family down right now. We cannot let our guard down. At the TV station, Blair was about to call it a day. Rachel was busy and stayed behind with the crew watching them. Courtney was humble throughout. She was only puzzled that Rachel's trip was very coincidental and suspicious. Because of Aaron's matter, Arnold recently shut himself in and refused to come out. He probably had no time to bother with the crew either, so she didn't see him for a long time. Just when she was done packing up and leaving with Lisa, she heard a small actor exclaim, Oh my God! Mr. President's dirty picture is out! Blair paused. Lisa exclaimed, No way! How could Mr. President have dirty pictures? Still, Blair subconsciously went over to see. When her eyes fell on the picture, her entire body was frozen. That was her. There was no way she wouldn't know. Just then, Miss Gartner, a strict voice boomed over her head. She looked up and saw a few burly men with a man in a suit standing in front of her. These guys looked familiar. You guys, we need Miss Blair Gartner's cooperation concerning a few matters. Please come with us. Blair didn't expect this matter to be leaked out after so long. That was a one-time accident of all accidents, but it made her inevitably involved in the strange world of politics and interact with people she never thought she would. Perhaps this was all because of Rachel. Otherwise, she wouldn't have gone to that hotel. But regardless of the reason, she could only follow these people now. Episode 344. He already decided to make good use of this matter. Lisa asked suspiciously, Blair, this is... It's fine. I'm just going for a while. It should be some problem at home. She handed the documents to Lisa. These are Rachel's documents. Take them back with you and return them to me in the office tomorrow. Okay. Lisa looked at the people in front of her and felt puzzled. These people looked formidable and didn't seem to be from the company. However, she looked at Blair and dared not to say anything. 
She could only fearfully watch these people escort Blair away from the studio. At the Presidential Palace, Glazed Tile Palace. It was the first time Blair came to such a place. She always watched the yearly open house on TV when this place was open to the public. But that day didn't have such strict staff. When she entered, the layers closed after her. None of her belongings were with her. Edward Nixon came in and handed over his belongings to the entourage. He looked at Blair and firmly walked over. His face darkened as he gazed at Blair. Feeling annoyed, he only took a glance and tossed the papers to her. Blair was stunned. She looked at Edward Nixon, picked up the papers suspiciously, and her face completely paled. Edward Nixon said, The only option I can think of now is to publicly declare that it's a private photo of me and my fiancé. I must claim that this is only part of my everyday private life. It has nothing to do with the outside world. Blair shivered. The image of me is not clear. It shouldn't be a problem, right? I will not rule out the possibility that they may have clearer pictures of us, so you must comply with all the conditions of the glazed tile palace. What? Blair looked at him in astonishment. What do you mean? It means that from now on, you will be my fiancé. Blair was entirely stunned. How could she become his fiancé? But there are no buts. This matter is all because of you, and now you must take responsibility for it. This is the consequence. I asked you to come here not for a discussion, but to inform you that you'll be my fiancé from now on. Although you temporarily won't be exposed, you must still be prepared for when that happens one day. Or if we need to take this to the next level, I'll inform you again. What? Blair looked at Edward Nixon in shock. You're asking me to pretend to be with you. On what basis? Edward Nixon stepped closer to Blair, looked at her face and said quietly, Otherwise, I will throw you and your family to rot in prison on the basis that you are a suspected spy that can undermine national security. You... This is an abuse of authority. Whatever floats your boat. You... Fine. This is because you are Rachel's agent. That's why I never got rid of you immediately. Otherwise, you wouldn't have the right to be here and talk to me right now. Blair looked at Edward Nixon and couldn't control her anger. I think that you haven't gotten rid of me because you're still going to use me. This is my right to stand here. Edward Nixon's eyes narrowed. Those menacing eyes looked murderous. Looking at this darling woman in front of him, his fiery gaze almost seemed to drown her. However, Blair didn't care at all. She was either going to live or die on this boat. She was going to die sooner or later, but she didn't know if she would be tossed away after being used or when she would be killed because of all these complicated relations. Now there was only one path for her. Why should she still fear anything? Blair said, What other requests do you have? List them all out now and stop beating around the bush. Everything is fake anyway, and I can't outplay you, politicians. I can't outplay the mighty Mr. President, so I won't have any tricks up my sleeves. Just be frank with me. Let's not waste time by beating around the bush. Edward Nixon heard this and looked deeply into her eyes. You better think this way. What do you expect? You are too strong. What else can I think of? Blair asked. Edward Nixon stared at her plainly. After some time, he then said, Good. You better remember your words today. I'm not hiding anything from you. From now on, you are my fiancé, and I don't need you to change anything. Just be yourself. I only need you to remember not to try to run away. Otherwise, you will regret every decision you make. Don't worry. I won't. Edward Nixon, indeed, didn't need her to do anything else. Anyway, a commoner wife would be beneficial to his image. Just as Aaron said. 
There had been speculations about him, and his family was urging him to get married. He could only choose her as his fiancée at this time. Their opponent was too discreet, and no matter how smart the Nixon family was, they would never know what other information was in their opponent's hands. Edward Nixon said, Come on, I'll send you back. No need. I can go back myself, she said, and turned to walk out. But Edward Nixon caught up to her. I need to assess your family situation, too. Blair looked up suspiciously. He said, Let's go. Blair watched as he strode out, and she could only follow him. Sitting in the presidential car, Blair looked at the guards outside and took a deep breath. The highly respected and adored Mr. President was sitting just inches away from her. She silently sighed, thinking that this was all too surprising. It was so surprising that there was no way for her to figure out what to do. Blair's family situation was not good. The money she worked and saved so hard for were already squandered by her gambling father. Now her family had nothing, and she had a younger brother who was still in school. Edward Nixon looked at the road outside as they drove along the alley. There were potholes on the surface, and the ghetto within the city looked particularly dirty. Edward Nixon looked outside. People from the presidential palace already had their cameras prepared. In tomorrow's papers, there were going to be reports that showed him sending his fiancée home. Blair, naturally, didn't know about all this. He looked at the woman beside him. He didn't plan to marry for the time being, but now, he suddenly had a fiancé. Very soon, they reached her house. Blair said, Thanks for sending me back. Looking at this dilapidated place, she asked, So... Mr. President has probably never been to such a shabby place. If you regret having me comply with you, remember to tell me earlier. Edward Nixon's eyes swept across the dirty little alley outside and remained silent. Blair also didn't say more. She closed the car door, looked back at the President's huge entourage, and walked in. Hey, sis! Blair heard her brother's call. She turned around and smiled at the teenage boy approaching her. She looked at her brother and smiled dotingly. You just ended class? Yes, the remedial teacher let us off late today. Right, who were those people? Her brother looked outside with his tender face and asked. Blair watched the line of cars slowly moving away. Oh, it's nothing. They sent me home. Really? They look very formidable. Blair laughed and put an arm around her brother's neck. Come on, let's go in. Episode 345. Mr. President actually has a fiancé. In the car. Edward Nixon only looked out from behind. Blair went into the dilapidated lift with her brother. At the front, the chauffeur asked, Mr. President, do you want to go back now? Yeah, let's go. He turned back, took one long look, and quietly answered. The next day. When Blair was still at the company, she heard someone in the office say, Oh my! That's impossible! The president announced that he has a fiancé! Oh, my heart is broken! When did Mr. President find a fiancé? How come I never knew about it? Didn't you see Mr. President's bedroom photo that went viral online? Mr. President then announced at the glazed tile palace that he indeed has his own private life. He met his fiance a year ago and recently succeeded in proposing to her. He also hoped that those secretly taking photos of him would leave him alone when it comes to his personal life, especially when it concerns an innocent lady's privacy. He asked the people to be magnanimous, as the other party was a normal girl with no special background. Thus, she has her own normal life, and he hoped that she wouldn't be disturbed. Netizens immediately condemned the paparazzi. They believed that the president was also human, and he was of age. There was nothing wrong with him being with his fiance. A part of the community also began to focus on the fact that the president actually had a fiancé and even admitted to it. 
Some people also pinned their speculations on that person, wondering which family's daughter was so lucky since she was a commoner at that. This kind of scenario really made them think of Princess Diana's commoner story. It made them so hopeful. Blair looked at the news and laughed speechlessly. These people really thought that the Cinderella story was true? But unfortunately, this Cinderella that was her was created by others. She sighed, took her notebook and laptop, and received a call. Miss Blair, I am Linda. I'm the head secretary of Mr. President. If you have any problems in the future, please call me. If Mr. President needs anything, I will also be informing you. Oh, thanks for the trouble, she replied. No need to be courteous, Miss Blair. You're the future headmistress of Glaze Tile Palace. I am the one serving you. Those words made her want to laugh. She was clearly given an impossible challenge. Now her little life was completely trapped as an ugly duckling amongst Mr. President's glorious achievements. When Aaron was much better, the ban outside had also been lifted. Although they were still searching for the suspect, the media already revealed that the suspect should have left the country. They didn't say that the suspect was bombed and already dead, and that the suspect they were searching for was just the planner. Aaron returned home with Rachel, and the maids were all elated. The chance that Aaron survived was unknown before that, and they were all anxious. Now that they saw Aaron return, they were relieved. Rachel was busy going in and out to help Aaron take his belongings and fetch the water. She was used to doing all these over the past few days. Aaron didn't like any attendants to enter his room there, so only Rachel helped him. Aaron watched her bring some water. He stopped Rachel and said, That's enough. You don't have to do anything anymore. Just let them do it. Why are you walking around everywhere? Rachel replied, It's all right. I have nothing to do anyway. Okay, sit here now. You're giving me a headache from all that walking. Aaron frowned as he pressed Rachel down. Another one at the side said, Madam is too hard working. All this should be left to us maids. Madam and sir are honorable people and should not be doing these menial tasks. Rachel asked, What's so honorable? We are all the same. I do it at home, too. Madam, you are too kind. The maids looked at Rachel in amazement. It was really because the maids did not see the two of them for so long that they were already very happy. The maids' expressions were so warm that even Aaron could feel it. When he usually went away, he never saw these maids so excited before. A maid said to Rachel, It's okay, madam. This is our job in the first place. If madam did it, what else are we supposed to do? Exactly. We are already very happy that madam came back with sir. When you two weren't around, this place didn't feel like home at all. Now it feels like home. <laughs> Don't tell me you miss me, Rachel chuckled and asked. The maids heard this and all chimed in. Of course we missed you, madam. When madam is not around, the house is so cold. Aaron looked at them, smiled and shook his head. He pulled Rachel to him and said, All right, let them do their job while you sit here obediently. Rachel could only watch the maids clean up the place. She leaned there and looked at Aaron, who was lying on the bed. Actually, although it was good to stay at the sanitarium, it always somehow felt depressing. Now that they were back home, their moods were much better. Thus, Rachel also smiled happily as she watched the maids tidy the room speedily. She felt very comfortable at that moment. Most importantly, Aaron held her hand from time to time, touching and caressing her. She looked at Aaron, who was reading some documents, and felt that his expression looked pleasant. It felt different, as if she could look at him forever and still not get enough of him. Aaron looked at the documents and then at the maids. At that moment, he also couldn't imagine how this house would be like without Rachel. 
but he was sure of one thing. These maids wouldn't have missed him in the past. Looking at the maids leave, Aaron said, Look at you still saying that you're useless. You've captured every person's heart in this house. Rachel asked speechlessly, How can that be? They usually wouldn't miss me. That's because you're too strict. You always have a stiff face and you're so fierce. Who would miss you? Aaron glared at her and said, That's not it. They are extremely loyal to me, but it's another feeling towards you. What feeling? In any case, you must have performed some trick to win them over. Impossible. I thought that it's just because I'm the wife, and that's why they are so good to me. Aaron shook his head. He didn't say anything else and only looked deeply at Rachel. Just then, Rachel was scrolling through her phone when she came across Edward Nixon's news. Oh my God! When did Big Brother have a fiancé? How come I didn't know about it? Aaron raised a brow and took a look. Oh...